In recent videos, we've had a really in-depth look at the, the release pattern in the golf swing. And we're gonna continue that today by looking at the most powerful player in, in world golf, in world tournament golf anyway. And what we're gonna see is he doesn't just move the club a lot faster, he moves the club in a completely different manner, certainly to the way that I was taught the game, um, and I think probably to most of us as well. Now, I don't normally do um, uh, swing reviews on, on the channel, but this is such a distinct pattern and flies completely in the face of how most of us learn the game. I think it's going to be really interesting. Okay, here it is then. This is Wilco Nirenbar. Um, excuse the pronunciation. This is a, um, well, a phenomenal athlete and a, and a really different pattern for us to have a look at. So when we learn the game, um, and, and probably for, for most of us, until you get to kind of low single figures, we're generally taught what, what would be considered a, a traditional golf swing. That's an, an L an L to L pattern. Often a popular drill that goes with that is the kind of tennis, tennis forehand motion. Um, and that really gets the club swinging from the inside and that right arm turning, turning over the left through impact. Now, as we're gonna see in this video, that is not what Wilco is doing. Now he is the longest player in world golf and hits the ball phenomenal distances. And as you see, that's not a kind of Deschambeau move. That's just not brute force. There is real kind of skill and fluidity and balance in that move. Now, when we look at that, that pattern in more detail, what you'll see is through the ball, if we look at the club face, that club face, you see it lining up at impact. It's a good centered hit. Now, just after impact, that face isn't just staying square. That's actually opening. Now, the forces on the swing are trying to close that club um, through impact and get it rotating. And the best most players do is be able to sort of slow that rotation for a small period of time. He actually has that face twisted and twisting open. And normally it's very hard to see the torques and forces in the swing because there's so many and the, and the club is only responding to the kind of net result of everything going on. But to get that happening, he must be um, using his arms to kind of twist it that way. And we see evidence of that in the through swing with that kind of slightly odd, or slightly unique, shall I say, um, under, undercutted, under twisted motion, almost slightly scoopy, but of course it's absolutely not scoopy. I mean, that, that, that wrist position there is slightly unique to him. So I think we can pretty much, we can safely deduce he is opening the face or applying an opening torque through impact. Um, and that would make sense, so make, make sense. Um, lots of players do that. But you know, back to our drill, for us to do that previously, we've started with a shut face, you know, and that kind of matches up, doesn't it? But if we go to the top of the swing with Wilco here, his face is not shut. So if he's got a normal grip, a square face at the top, yet he's opening the face through impact, why is that not going 10 miles right? And I am pretty sure he hits a very neutral flight, probably a, a, probably a slight draw. Now, the answer is, as he's coming into impact, notice how his body is rotating. So his body is hugely open while he is opening the face. Now, those two go together. Now, one could argue that the, he, um, because he rotates so much, he has to open the face. I would argue the opposite um, causality as well. I would say that um, opening the face that way uh, evokes a much bigger response from the body. The there's definitely a two-way connection. It's not just you know, in, in one direction. Most definitely not the playbook that I learned with. What is going on there then? How can he be opening the club through impact and not hitting it 10 miles right? So he's twisting it back on itself, which is that move instead of that one. Twisting it back on itself, but it's not kind of shanking like so. Okay, theory alert. There are multiple torques and forces going on in the swing, and we're not gonna get deep into it. This is gonna be quick, I promise you. So the main force is the handle being pulled around the hand path, tangential force. While the club is being pulled in that manner, the, the club is rotating. It rotates up and down, so we call these torques. That's the red axis here. So you can see how it rotates upwards that way, downwards and upwards again. And while that's going on, there's also a rotation around that green axis. You can see, see the green axis here, it rotates from behind us to in, to in front. And that is how we have this opening motion, but still manage to square the face. So that is ultimately the difference between moving the club like this, moving the weight of the club like so, there's our L to L, 
or twisting the arm in the opposite direction and turning the body. And you can see that that is also squaring the club, but the relationship between me and the club head and the, the drive on the handle is really different through the ball. And of course the swing is a, is a balance of all these torques and, torques and forces going on. Some of them are most sort of obviously applied with, the, with the, you know, the hands and arms, but the positioning of your body will put a, a force on the club, the um, rotation of your body, how you pull, all these things need to, need to kind of marry up to find impacts. Okay, I'm not suggesting this is a pattern that is gonna work with many of us, but let's, let's give it a go just for fun. How on earth can I, you know, if, if we're taught to kind of square the club over this way, how can twisting, which is, which is of course this, this motion, the right arm turning over the left, how can Wilco be twisting it in the opposite direction through the ball? How would that ever square it? Well, we had a look at the torques and forces a minute ago. It twists back on itself, which shallows the club nicely, really happy with that, um, and lots of body turn. So as I make my downswing, I'm rotating the club <laughs> kind of in, in what would feel like an opening torque. So what's that clockwise this way? That is shallowing the plane. And I then need to make sure that I rotate, rotate my body and rotate the handle to square it down near impact. Strangely, that's gone really straight. Okay, let's stop there before we get carried away. So, um, I mean, fascinating to see that, that that Wilco pattern, and it is possible. And I think I think this is the this, this is the gold in that. It is very possible to square the club without adding a lot of that kind of right arm turning over. I think that's probably the biggest thing um, to take from this video is we do not need to be rotating the right arm over the left to square it. He's actually got it going going the other way. Um, I don't think that's a pattern for everybody. I think we'd probably get too shallow at the bottom. I think we, there would be some shanking. There'd be lots of thin shots as well. Um, if you find that you're a bit steep and you're, you're, the club is moving this way, I suggest you've probably got that right shoulder turning inwards, sorry, the trail shoulder and the, the trail arm turning inwards. And to get some of that feel, that kind of subtle, um, you know, opening um, rotation of the arms would, would probably help. Um, and for the rest of us, I think it's key that we, we don't ever feel that like we have to kind of hit it hard with the right side and turn, and turn the arms over. The, the forces on the, on the handle as we turn our body through and we slow, slow the handle are enough to rotate the club and swing it out into impact. That for me is probably the biggest lesson from looking at a powerful swing like Wilco Nyanambar. If you've enjoyed the video, then please click subscribe, maybe share it with a friend. Um, and until I see you next time, good luck, play well.